So, hey, what's up? What's up, guys? It's me, Good Jam Molly, your coach and your host of Legal Greatness. Today, we are back again with this live streaming. And we have a guest there, Nicolo from, uh, uh, from US. And she's, she's from like uh, Russia and uh, she now came to US. And uh, she's a coach and uh, she helped lots of people to overcome the limited beliefs and also. She has her own company named uh, SHL Foundation, and uh, she's a person who been in Tony Robbins' uh, community as well. Uh, like uh, she learned from him, uh, and she was also a platinum member. Like uh, it was, it's, a, it's, a, it's a truly intense part, okay? Where most people get lots of breakthrough, learn lots of stuff in that in that group. And uh, she, she also have a like really, really great, uh, I mean, uh, successful relationship. And also not only that, I mean, she's really changing people's lives as well, okay? She made her uh, like, um, like successful uh, financially when she was in like 21. And also um, she was good in real estate as well. So yeah, let's welcome Liana Nicola. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Gunjan. Hi. Very, Hi. very grateful. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm very excited to br bring some uh, value to your community. And I love your energy. And I've been watching you. And you're just, you're just great at building relationship and just giving to the world. So I respect that. And it's a huge honor to be here today. Hi. It's an honor to have you. It's an honor to have you as well. So, so uh, Liana, like you have started your journey as a very early stage like uh, uh, in 21 most people don't even think about personal development stuff like uh, you have started these things and uh, and you have made yourself financial free at so early so uh, how did you thought to how did this all started hey uh, I started from uh, I mean I was a hard I had a hard childhood and I was brought up in a really hard uh, environment and at some moment you know when I was 16 I just realized that I either go down or I need to leave house and I need to do something about my life because my family was extremely chauvinistic it was all about uh, you know the man rules the world and uh, you just need to get married and I didn't feel that I didn't feel that I want to be like this submissive quiet woman because I had a fire inside me I felt like I could do things in life and I appreciated freedom so much so um, I just left home and hey it wasn't easy but at some moment you know when you when you really hustle when you really find try to find ways when you just hunt for opportunities the opportunity comes when you're ready and um one thing that I always had going for me, the same as yourself, I could build relationships and I could connect with people. And that helps, you know, when you build relationships one, sooner or later, um, things just come together and people just are willing to help you. That's, that's how it came for me. Okay, so you wanted some change and uh, you went uh, through that flow of the change and suddenly you started to meet people who started to help you as well. I and mean, that's good. Uh, that's hey, good. I, hey, mean, I, I, I was a party girl. I was like, you know, just no good. I was just going out, <laughs> drinking, getting wasted, but I was getting wasted at the fancy places. So when All I right. was like 17, 18, I would meet people and I would build relationships. And then I would find out that this person is, uh, you know, an important per person and another person will be successful. And then I just had the community of people that could do things. And then when the opportunity came, I was like, you know what, why not ask? Because asking will take you far. You know, a lot of people think that they just sit, th sit at home and they just complain how the world is unfair. And I could have done the same. But um, you just go out, you just meet people, you just look for opportunities. And, and sooner or later, it comes, you just need to keep working and keep, keep, creating for yourself the the wealth the opportunities uh, but it's just very generic and I want to give something more specific uh, because we have Indian audience right it's, it's yeah. mostly Indian or, or we have something no, international we have, we have we have international it's all over the world yeah yeah so let's like instead of like you know giving the generic things you the, the guys are probably already know that right we go hustle and blah 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 let's just let's just focus on how is this happening in your country? Um, 
what is the entrepreneurship? Where is the entrepreneurship? Because I've been to India, but I don't know as much what is going on there. And maybe I can help with my experience to give you the specific advice for your audience that they can go and, and start it. And not only the mindset, but also the how to. All right. Um, uh, I mean, I, it's really, it's really will be great to know from you because uh, you have started your personal development journey at such an early age. Like currently in India, if I, if I speak in India, the people who are in 21 or 23, they're playing video games, okay? <laughs> they're playing video games. It's all over the world. Like people are really concerned about what Indian teenager will do because nobody's getting outside to earn money or they earn cash or find a solution. So it's really, uh, I mean, I really wanted to know that uh, even though you got outside, okay, even though you uh, started to ask some help, you, you told that you, it was only poverty things, okay, but what has caused you to think that you need to get out of the poverty and you need to be rich? Because most people don't have this. They, they think that my father was poverty, my living in poverty, uh, my, 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 uh, my uh, whole generation was in poverty. Why should I be rich, right? So they think that rich is not for me. And um, that is, is uh, something alienated. I mean, that's for one of the type of people. They're from one of the genes, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm living my lifestyle. This is fine. And they stay in the comfort zone. So why did you choose yeah. to change? Um, everybody is different. In my particular case, I wanted to prove my mom that I deserve her love more than my brother because my mom always loved my brother more than me, my older brother. And she would put all the hopes at him. And he was just, you know, not ready to take on all that responsibility that she wanted to put on him. So I took it. And in my case, I felt always under love. But that's, that doesn't mean that my mom didn't love me. That was my childhood impression. And we spoke and I spoke about karma. And that's just, you know, your soul, your, you come to this world to get into certain experience. And you choose to be born in a particular family to get particular traumas in order to overcome them and get the experience that your soul needed. That's my own belief. And the more I work with people, the more I understand that the soul has a particular path. So then within that path, it's like, you know, you can put a chair on the floor and you can look at the chair from here, from here, from here, from here. It's going to be the same chair, but your experience of experiencing the chair would be different. So everybody has a different thing. For me, it was my mom, and I wanted to buy my mom's love, if, if I'm completely honest. For you, that probably could be, I have never had this in my family, so I want to take my family on the next level, and I want to create legacy for myself, and I want to be the first one, and that drives you. So everybody needs to find their own drive. So you guys, think about it. What is really that breaks your heart? What is really that doesn't, doesn't, let you to breathe freely in this world and what is that really fuels you that you really want to change in this world and then just go after it because your goal your mission has to be bigger than you because it's not if it's not bigger than you you're not going to lift your ass from the couch you're going to sit there and complain about things and you mentioned people that play video games and you know what let's leave video games to these people let's not talk to these people because that's their path. They will be playing video games. Who are we doing this for? Is people like you and I, it's people that have fire inside and they say, you know what? This is where I am. I don't belong here. There was just this feeling inside of me, very deep, very far away. But I knew I was not built for what was coming for me, you know, and it was scaring me. So my comfort zone, whatever the comfort zone was for me at that time, was much worse than the unknown. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They yeah, don't know that. So I just stood up and I just went to do that. I know because I so did not like what was going on here. Uh, so you have this fire inside you. Is that something that that really drives you to achieve whatever the result that you got? I mean, that's what you mean. And uh, and uh, and I think I think uh, this thing is pretty unique. I mean, some people have this fire, some people don't, or some people just ignore it. Okay. And uh, some people, really, some people choose to listen to it, okay? Because uh, I, I know for a fact that uh, I have choose to listen to it. For first of all, I was ignoring it for a long, long time, okay? So, uh, and that's the very great reason that you chose this path and um, you chose the personal development journey. Uh, 
Um, so how did you meet Tony Robbins? Like, how did you come to hear about <laughs> How do I get into t TR community? Um, yeah. It was, it, it, when I moved to the States, I moved, I, 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 was, I was doing commercial real estate and I was pretty, pretty successful at the time. I think it was 23 at the time, 24. And uh, I was depressed because when I started getting money and I was like proving my mom everything and what I mentioned, I was saying, okay, you made a mistake. You love my brother more. There you go. I'm going to buy you this that love me. And my mom did. And then at that moment, I was like, okay, I reached it. Now what? And I was feeling that all my dreams, all my concepts in my mind that I will, how will I feel when I will reach a certain financial level, they fell apart because, because there is no... Um, no satisfaction, no fulfillment outside in. It's only inside out when you when you actually accept it and you put it inside yourself. And when when it is being to um, when it is just integrated in you, the self love, the, the the validation, the respect, the self respect, then you start feeling it inside, and then you know the world around you changes. You don't you don't react so vulnerably to that you just feel confidence and you feel grounded but it's also you know a path again everybody is different and for me at that point i felt like i was i was uh tricked i was not happy i was not fulfilled and as a matter of fact i was depressed and i started drinking i started you know again being self-destructive and at some point i was dating a guy who was um a famous director back in Russia. And he just kept telling me about movies and, and acting and directing. And I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. This is so weird, so creative. So not like in the world, not, not the world that I live in. So I thought maybe I'm gonna go and uh, learn about how to direct movies, how to create movies. And since I had some funds, I went to Hollywood and I took a course and I realized that I have like 0.01 <laughs> skills for English. I thought it'd be enough, but it wasn't. I had to write scripts and giving directions to actors. So I switched into acting. And then acting okay. was really revealing for me. It was very therapeutic because as an actor, you need to learn about your emotions. You need to learn what triggers you, what makes you happy, what makes you sad. And I was suppressing all those emotions and our emotions are our fuel. So for that, that was a huge step for me into self therapy and understanding my internal mechanisms, my my motivations, and I I got curious about that, and I discovered the whole world in the United States because in the United States is so popular the self development, the psychology, all, all people have been doing that for many many decades rather than you know in Russia, yeah. and I started I started reading books, and then of course I discovered Tony Robbins. You know the guy's been like forty years, probably at that time it was like thirty five years on the market, and he he was like the number one guy, um, the, the the most well managed and marketed coach in the world, I, I think so far. So, mm -hmm. and it was some time when I, I felt really serious about it, but then I also felt there was a part of me that was like, oh, all this kumbaya, they're selling me all that stuff. You know, they just want my money because I know American marketing, how it works. They just sell, sell, sell. And then at some moment I was like, you know what? It was my birthday and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make myself, I'm gonna make myself a gift. I'm going to buy the VIP ticket to go to Tony's event. And I did. And it was UPW. It was my birthday. And um, I met a guy who was in the line with me. We, were, we were really communicated. Uh, we were really connected. And then by the end of the event, this guy bought into Tony's Platinum Partnership which is you you go around the world you uh, you go to all this uh, tony seminars you go to his house you connect with him you ask him questions hang out with him so it's like it's a pretty incredible thing and by the way tony took us to india and uh he yeah. rented an amazing castle they put like elephants there red carpets people were like throwing flowers at us we just looked totally dressed up i like i had a gorgeous sari i still have it <laughs> So right. we just like celebrated. It was like 5,000 people 
serving us and we were like 200 people there it was it was quite incredible india was like the most magical experience that we had with tony those are one of the, our our platinum trips that we went to and you we were in jaipur that. you were in we jaipur we were in jaipur yes we were how do you know <laughs> i saw that i, I haven't done research <laughs> oh you're amazing <laughs> we went to jaipur we went to varanasi uh, and we've been to Delhi, but like, you know, coming by, uh, it was magical, really. So, yeah, we, we had a fantastic experience. And um, uh, India is an amazing country, the country where you can see the luxury and the, the most poor people like in, in, in one shot. Right. And then yep. what it really struck me that um, all the colors. And people, even they don't have much, it's just like talking about the level, the wellness of the soul, even if they don't have much, they're happy. And that's incredible. You know, and, and, and you look in America and California, you know, the most, the most uh, fulfilled from the financial point uh, state and people bitch about things, you know, there's a weather that is always perfect and they just still bitch about things. And then you go to India, it's such an amazing contrast. And I have such yeah. a deep respect for you guys. You're incredible, really. Uh, so, yeah, we can so, go, uh, uh, you know, uh, lots of time, I, you know, like uh, the things uh, that we can find in India, we can find in other countries as well. Uh, what we can find here, we can find here. So at some point, I feel that uh, um, it's, it's our values, okay? Yeah, like <laughs> it's our values that are different, but we can't compare because um, the other places are beautiful. Russia is good at its own uh, way. India is good at its own way. So there's and a comparison. Nowadays, with, with, yes, you're absolutely right. And nowadays when the internet, the, the borders are being raised. You know, I, I hire a lot of specialists from India for, for uh, writing or online development, the, the websites. Right. You, you guys have incredible specialists that just, you know, they're, they're really affordable and they're re they provide really quality jobs. So with internet, there is so much opportunity to, to become skilled professional, put yourself out there, be professional, have ethics, provide good service and, and you can make money, you know, you can make money yeah. and if you want, you can, you can, you can move and find a way how to, how to move to any country you want to live in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, internet has done a really good thing because in the past few years, like it has really developed the country, uh, and now the people who are like poor, uh, who couldn't access the internet, can do it. So it has really changed people' life. And uh, the thing, and uh, one more, a few more things that I want to know that uh, you see, real estate is really hard work. I mean, uh, people who spend years in real estate but can't to get that success. They uh, spend day at night with that. But how came like uh, you have did uh, great in that in so early stages? I really want to know that. You mean in which in my business and and coaching? Yeah, business, real in, in, in commercial, no, in commercial real estate. Like you have uh, have pretty much good success in that in early stages. Like it's really hard work. But how did you do that? Um, you mean for building my my coaching business, my reputation, and uh, the client list? Is this what you're asking me? No, no, I'm asking about, about the real, real estate, real estate, oh, like commercial real, real estate. Yeah. That's exactly what I was telling you. I was partying and I was meeting people, again, talking about building relationships. You know, I get a lot right. of requests, for example, from people. And at that time, we didn't have internet. Um, I'm, I'm not as, as young as I might look. But... Uh, <laughs> uh, Back then, we didn't have internet, so the only thing we could we could meet people was in person. You guys, the younger generation, you have much more opportunity. And I love how you did this, right? Because you get a lot of uh, knockoff emails or on, on social media, like, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? I don't know you. Who are you? Why should I do something for you? Because people have this... Uh, this approach that you know the the world owes them or they're just scared and they don't know how to do that how to be mm -hmm. graceful which you actually you you were you've been graceful you've been contributing you've been communicating you've been building relationships so when you ask me to do the interview or whatever you, you can ask me right i know i know you i know you're you're my my cool buddy and john that we that we've been hanging out on the internet right <laughs> so of course i would say yes 
if I don't have anything else to do, I would love to, um, I would love to contribute to you and your community. So building a relationship, a genuine relationship with people of interest of you. And now I know that you have the coaching business and you asking me, how did I build the coaching business? Because if you probably get something from, from, um, you know, the, the pinpoints, you can also gain more clients. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I I'm here for you. If you want to ask me about that in, in, in case of my real estate business, that was just easy. I've been partying like crazy. I was like 17, 18 years old at the time. Uh, honestly, this is what I'm telling, like, this is honestly like truth. And I've been collecting uh, contacts. I didn't even know what people do until one lady told me, you know what, you, do you want to make money on, on uh, commercial real estate objects? If you have people with money that you know, you can just propose them. I'm going to give you the percentage if we close the deal. And in that case, I, I lost because I did not, I lost a lot of money because I did not secure myself because I didn't have access. I didn't understand how to make a, a contract, how to protect myself legally. So that was just on the handshake, right? So she gave me some money. And for me, I was like 19 years old. I was like, oh my God, that was like a loss. But still, she, she gave me like 40% of what she, she was supposed to give me. But I was still grateful because for me, like 20 years old, I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. That changed my life. And then that allowed me to, to establish myself even more. But I still was a kid. I was like dumb. But I was, I was dumb, but I was charismatic. And I was connecting with people. And I was putting myself, myself out there. Now I'm looking back. and I was like, oh, my God, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I feel such so much shame for like how I used to be, but hey, right. that's my past, and that brought me to where I am today. So I respect that. I mean, uh, that's great. I mean, it's just because you focus more on building relationship, it's really made a drastic change in your life. Hey, you like, just look around and you see what are your assets, and your assets might be your charisma, your ability to connect your knowledge of languages, your knowledge of ethics, something that other people don't have. And, you know, you have friends that know friends and you just think, how can I monetize it? How can I incorporate that? And, you, and I'm, I'm a huge believer into, the, believer into the universe. And I just send the request. I'm a witch like this. And I say, okay, please universe, creator, please give me this and that. I want this to have to come to my life in the nicest and easiest way for me. Uh, and then I'm grateful. And I just say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then in a, in a while, I need to trust that this thing will come. And then when it comes, I got to be ready. But it's now that I'm conscious like this. At that time, it was just, you know, I, I was completely unconscious about things. But that's how it works. All right. So uh, before the, uh, starting all of this, like it was like a, an unconscious act and you're just flowing and just, and you met people, you started real estate. I mean, uh, this is a, it, it really a different perspective. Uh, uh, like uh, people, most people think that they're living and uh, the environment is affecting them and they live in a certain way, but uh, you took different steps uh, and you move more into personal development and uh, you form greater relationship, even though you had some bad effect, but you, you, you took the way towards a better life. I mean, that's good. I mean, maybe you need to have to prove to your mom that, uh, that, uh, that you, you are a better kid or, or better than your brother, whatever it is. But that was a, a, a way, or you can call a, a, a lucky way, or maybe not lucky, or a, uh, a guidance. Uh, who do you think that uh, that mostly guided you towards that, uh, towards uh, better opportunity? I mean, um, I don't know. Honestly, I, mean, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I was guided. Probably, I believe in destiny. I believe that there are certain points that we need to go through. I believe that there is certain unavoidability that we cannot avoid. Some points that we that we need to go into but it's a deeper conversation at that point i was just following my need for freedom mm -hmm. i can say that that looking back i'm thinking that i did not have intelligence or i did not have ethics but i was i was courageous 
the courage is the one thing that you need if you want to get out of this because it's so freaking scary. <laughs> and honestly, now from the security standpoint, I look back and I'm thinking, oh my God, like I, I did things that I could have been so easily like, you know, killed or uh, it's just like, it, it was crazy the things that I've been through and I probably the creator just protected me. Uh, but I, that one thing that I had is courage, that's for sure. And I still have courage and I, and I still find ways how to push myself out because if I don't push myself out, I start operating under my potential. And one thing that I notice about people that are depressed, they are operating under their potential because there are some fears and blocks that hold them back. And they start believing these fears and that that voice in their head that says, you're not good enough, you can't do that, all this bullshit. And because they listen to this, they start operating under their potential and they're depressed because there is so much energy that the universe gives them, the creator gives them, and they can't implement that. Because when you implement, when you, when you progress, that's when you start feeling happiness. You, you grow, you achieve, there is, a, there is a, a point there that you reached and you feel the satisfaction. There is another thing, you know, the, the, the fulfillment of the soul. If you fulfill your mission, something, what I mentioned before, something that is bigger than you, something that makes your heart beat. But at the same time, the, the, the intelligent analyzing way is uh, do, did I reach that that milestone that I wanted to? And a lot of times you reach that milestone and you're already not happy about this, right? So you need to teach your body to celebrate. When you reach the, the, the milestone, you need to teach your body to celebrate. You need to take yourself a pat on the back and say, good job, Liana, you've done well. Thank you. Thank you, my right. body, for helping me this. <laughs> so, 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 so you need to, uh, I mean, every time you achieve it, something um uh, celebrate. That's for, so you celebrate it and that helps you yeah. to move further and further i mean that's a great point uh lots of people need, so it does you, it i want to i want to qualify on this um a lot of people don't do that but your body needs to feel the positivity of achievement because if you don't anchor that in your body then what happens you achieve and you don't have any emotions you don't have any celebration then you achieve again 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 and at some point your body gives up and it says Hey, I've been working so hard, but I don't feel any fulfillment. I don't feel any pat on the back. I don't feel any celebration. Like, why are we doing this? So then you just cut it off because there is no point. You're wasting energy and you don't get anything. So Tony says the secret to living is giving. Mm -hmm. I say wow. the secret to living is to take to be giving. So it's an exchange right. in the universe. We're not here just to give. We're here to, uh, to take and give. It's like you fly on a plane, who do you put the mask on first? Because if you give, 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 and you are not safe, your body is not protected, your body doesn't feel fulfilled, then pretty soon you're going to burn out. And that's what happened with me in the beginning of my career. And you probably also face that when you work with people and, you know, everybody wants to get, um, get your health for free probably. And you love your work and you provide it, provide it, but then you burn out because you give the energy and you don't take. It's all about the energy balance. And money is a great energy um, exchange thing, right? So money is the energy. So you exchange the energy and then you both have the balance of give and take. So it's not, it's not that you just need to give away and then you die while you're giving away. That's a very important thing to remember. Wow, and that's a great perspective. Now, uh, not only people really did, there's a saying like, uh, if you want something, then you have to give more. Uh, now, this is, this is a new perspective. Like, you have to take and then give more. <laughs> that's a new perspective. The, yeah, you see the problem. A lot of people feel that they're not good enough. And when I started, for example, I, and you probably also face that, there's an imposter syndrome. It's like, who am I to tell people how to live? But then I realized that there are people, of course, there is Tony Robbins. Of course, there are people like, you know, high end, but they're on such level that a lot of people here, you know, they just can't reach. 
So there are a lot of people in the middle levels. And I know that I take from here and I continue giving, you know, in the pyramid and they, those people take and they continue giving. So it's, it's just the flow of energy and the knowledge and wisdom um, that, that, and then until, you know, you develop to the level when you open up your own channel and you start like downloading information and wisdom yourself, then you can disconnect from Tony and you, as, as the saying says, you need to kill your teacher and you so that you can be autonomous. Um, but it's very important to appreciate yourself because you see a lot of people come to you and it, it, it comes to any, any business in the world. A lot of people come to you and they say, oh, why should I pay you this and that, right? And when they ask you that, that means the only one thing. You did not communicate the value of what you're giving to them. And the first person who you need to communicate the value of what you're giving is yourself. Because if I don't feel that I'm valuable and what I give is valuable, then other people won't feel that. So you've got to be religiously in love with what you do and and to be able eloquently and intelligently explain what people will get when they, uh, when they get your services or your product, because they don't mm -hmm. know. And if you don't know, they don't know for sure. That's, that's a great point. And uh, I, I've, also, I've also heard that you have a, a industry, like you have founded that industry, SHL. Uh, what is SHL and uh, how, did you, uh, you know, how did you help people? Uh, I've seen that uh, you have uh, you have helped people to be a coach and uh, to be an expert. So you're also creating coaches. Uh, so tell me like, about it. Like what is? Yeah. So my my company SHL and SHL. This is how we I started before. Uh, it's called Start Happy Life. That's what SHL stands for. But okay. then when I moved into corporate coaching, you know, start happy life kind of sounded a little bit, you know, to Kumbaya. So we decided to go with SHL. It's like more professional, honestly, as it is. Um, but then over the time, I, I work with corporate clients. And um, one thing that I learned that's probably not my not my cup of tea, because um, what I there was one thing. And then, you know, this industry, the, the corporate life is um it's where the most money is if you want to work with that but then um what what a what a person that owns a company wants that people are happy with them whatever they get paid right i'm more of like um entrepreneurial mindset inspirer it's inspiring coach and i i don't teach what i don't do if I was right. working for a big company, I've been working for somebody for two months in my life and I quit, I could not do that. I can't tell people, oh, you, like, everybody's different. Again, I'm probably not their perfect coach. Because when I come to a company, I see the potential in a person and I want to inspire them to do their own business. And that's unethical for me. <laughs> but if somebody likes working in the company, because there are some benefits in that as well, you know, you don't need to make a lot of decisions. You don't need to hustle every day. You don't need to wake up and self-motivate yourself as you know, any entrepreneur should do. Because yeah. in, in, when you're an entrepreneur, you don't have anybody. You don't have the boss that comes and kicks your ass or motivates you or like ask you, what are you, how are you doing? You wake up, let's go motivate yourself and push yourself to do things right or be Definitely. pulled in which is which is even cooler so um with my company it just came naturally when i started doing personal development people started asking you know like friendly advice and i could not believe that i can advise somebody how to live i was cr crazy humble at that deep down i, I did not believe i, I possess that ability or the rights but then I started receiving gifts from my friends that we had conversations with. And that was the universal feedback to me that the, the universe was telling me this is valuable. People value this. Actually, in the material world, in the physical world, you get the, uh, the feedback that this is valuable. And a lot of times people told me you should do this professional. And I was like, me? Oh, how? How? But then at some moment, um, I just realized I like, I like this. I like helping people. And that made me forget about my own pains. And the moment when I would help somebody else, I would feel really good about myself. 
And within time, while I've been pursuing this career, of course, I've been working on myself. The work never stops, my friend. You got to have to just <laughs> hustle. And the more you work yourself out, the more you work out your own blocks and your pains, the more you heal yourself, the more energy you have. It's like the capacity of the energy that you can give to people uh, that you don't waste on holding back or processing the the reaction situations, right? Somebody writes you, oh, you're an idiot, you're stupid, you're a bad coach, blah, blah, blah. I used to go bananas over that. I'm like, oh my God, they're going to love me. I need to be a perfect coach. I need to be this and I need to be a perfect human being. This is done now. If people tell me I don't like you, blah, 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 that, they're like asking for my energy and understand that, block, bye-bye. I'm not going to, you see, because that's a self -love. Have different, it, it's just, I am not, I'm not intending to waste my energy because if I, the moment I get into this, into this blah, blah, you know, proving who's right, who's wrong. This is a duality, right? We live in the world of dualities. It's Ansara, right? Wrong, right, light, dark, good, bad, God, devil, mm -hmm. all that stuff. And people just, this is the main entertainment for, for human beings here on earth. And if I get into that game, like they pitch it to me and I respond, there you go. We're already exchanging energy hits. And by the end of this exchange, I'll be, I'll be just, you know, drained. I don't want that. I'm going to take this energy oh. and go create something that I want rather than be reactive to whatever people say. If they don't like me, I'm sorry. I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> you know, that's uh. it. I'm open to creative criticism, but I'm not open when people try to feel better um, when they put me down. And they feel like they, they feel like they, you know, they just if they if they bite somebody who they think that is unreachable for them at that moment. Uh, I used to do that, too. Hey, we're all guilty of that. Right. You're in a bad place. You're in a low energy place. And you look at this person, and you're like judging them and you want to let them know what you think about them. Yep. And if you care, about, if you care about every person who tells things about you, you're going to stay low. You're going to stay low in energy and you won't be able to produce. So you need to train yourself to respect yourself, to have dignity, because if you don't have dignity, you don't have anything in this life. You're not going to, you're not going to have, um, you're not going to have a good relationship. You're not going to have uh, a level of self-respect to ask enough money for your services or your products. You're not going to have anything. You're going to be drained. And one thing that I always wanted to share Tony talks about it. He says, it's actually neural linguistic programming um, uh, techniques and uh, principles. Uh, whoever state is stronger, that person wins the communication. Have you ever seen that a person would be wrong about something, but they come in so strong and you know you're right and you're like, shit, I think I'm wrong about this. Right, and you're, yeah, like, you're, you're right, and yeah. you're like, you're like, oh my god, it's like they're so confident, there's such certainty there. Like you're, you're like, okay, I'm backing up, right? Because they just have this strong belief that this is who they are. Whoever's state is stronger, that person wins. And I know we're, you know, since you guys are in India, and I know there's a chakras, there's a big deal there. Um, mm -hmm. We talk about Manipura. We talk about the third chakra, the social communication. So one mm -hmm. thing, you guys, I'm going to give you to, to work out your, your Manipura and to uh, um, attract money into your life is to do the plank. Okay. You know that plank when you stand on your shoulders yeah, yeah. and your yep. feet? Yeah, In the plank. morning, each morning, I do the plank. And I consciously focus on my third chakra, which is solar plexus, a little bit lower, so by like two centimeters below so solar plexus. And you just breathe into it. And, and like every day I do this I, and I say, my, my monthly income is, you know, blah, 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 plus like $20,000 plus, right? Per month. This is my monthly income. And I just breathe, breathe because your body, it's like, it's like training yourself into that. And Manipura is that chakra that actually brings you money. This is, this is, this is your strong state chakra. And this is what you need to work if we talk about energy. Cool. Wow. Wow, wow. I mean, the, that's, a, that's a great information. I didn't know about that, the money for things, you know. <laughs> but this, uh, the chakra things, uh, I mean, it's, it's just really fascinating for a long, long time. I wanted to learn, but uh, yeah, uh, I mean, 
uh, someday, someday we are really, I'll be really go deep into touch with India. Lots of other people who are in psychology, yoga, who, who have this oh, culture of this. Wow. Yeah, have this uh, culture of this chakra things and all. But really, I don't understand it in the, uh, at this moment, but yeah, someday. So, um, uh, so uh, you have started really psychology because um, uh, you have uh, wanted to get a better in acting dance you have started your um then you have started moving into uh, like tony robin then uh then uh, that and uh, you started making founding your own company as well was that because yeah. uh, that you moved because uh, you got inspired from tony robin to be in the coaching industry yeah you see what i'm getting from what you're asking me it's like this mental shift what yeah. ma- what really liana what really made you to start your company right yeah. but you see what this is this is the answer that i think you want to hear and correct me if i'm wrong the desire to put yourself out there should i not or should i or should i not to put myself out there will i be successful if i do that and again we come to this self value dignity and self respect right where do you take dignity if your mom and if your dad were poor where do you where do you take that understanding that your mom and your dad gave you the best the best they could possibly give from their experience they gave you i'm going to talk about something really um intimate but if you think about your dad conceiving you the spermatozoids were running and there was like millions of them and the best mm-hmm. one the strongest one ran oh, in the fastest one the achiever the best one actually ran in and your mother had to accept it and nurture it and give love and build you from all her cells and all her all her body your parents gave you the best so that you could be right. the best and thinking about that you can intake your parents with gratitude and say not like oh i'm smarter than you my my dad and my mom are dumb or something that doesn't work like this the energy of your ancestral line goes from up down it's like you know it's like a a phone is being charged from a plug and the phone says oh i have more energy than the plug that's stupid this is doesn't no, work this that's, way that's, yeah that's true our our parents just lived in a different vibration and each generation we are adapted to the next vibration but respecting your parents and knowing that you are the best because they are the best and they gave you the best they had to live the whole life and experience their own traumas and then according to those traumas they needed to attract each other in order for you to come to this world there is a whole freaking process that had to happen for years for decades for you to come to this world think about that and think about how much dignity power and self love you must have for yourself and i know it's hard when when you know in a country where the population is so so uh excessive and and the resources are limited but think about it our parents lived in a world where there was a lot of deficiency we are the first generation that lives in the world this is the greatest time to be alive we like my parents stood in lines in soviet union there was no food there they had mm-hmm. they had those stamps that they had to exchange for food there were like huge lines this people were standing it's such an incredible deficiency we are the first generation that lives in the world where people throw food away uh-huh. you know? yep. yeah we can see that and think about it think about it and people still live in scarcity why because it's a lot of generational programming that tells us you can't have there is scarcity out there that that's bullshit because our generation is the first generation that does not have any scarcity just freaking go and take take so that yeah. you can give more how about that uh uh-huh. yeah yeah i i am really getting it cuz so is this limiting belief coming from like their ancestor and this all this programming that's going from their own genes and all and that, that they are still carrying it right that's what's happening right now and uh, and even though there are opportunity people are seeing the opportunity 
because they have this uh, ancestor mind or something like that, which came from the ancestor and they're telling the very discursive. So they're yeah. literally living in an illusion that is uh, that's not true. We that's all live in the illusion. I think we live, 98% of us lives in the illusion, but truth is a very expensive commodity. Not everybody can, can allow themselves to have truth. Uh, some people can have an, and withstand more truth and some people mm -hmm. just check out and they're in their elusive world and that's a deeper conversation but you're absolutely right we have i don't like to call it limiting beliefs i mean this is like an appropriate word for that that people use in the world i just say beliefs mm -hmm. because when you when we think that it's limiting beliefs then we put the negative connotation and i'm not about the good or bad person um, I'm more of like, this is what is, and mm -hmm. this has already happened. And the moment you accept it and you say, okay, I see this belief, I recognize it, and I give it place in me, and I make my peace with that. This is what was needed for my parents, for my ancestors, maybe for my reincarnations to survive. And I see it. The moment you start looking at it, that moment it stops being your blind spot. And when it stops being a blind spot, that's the moment when you stop, start having power over it. So the moment when you say it's limited, it's limiting, it's bad, you want to dissociate from that. That's why I'm inviting all my clients to start looking at things that they're just what is. They're not, not bad, not good. This is just what is. And you inherit it. And this is the price for your life. And I recognize the price for my life and I accept it and I accept my life by the price that I got it. And now I can do something with it. You know, that just, okay. just this mentality, just this mind shift allows you to see more truth because when you say this is bad and this is the bad part of me, I want to dissociate it from myself or rich people are bad. Um, uh, you know, rich people are not fair. You can't rely on rich people. You don't want to be that bad person. You want to be mm -hmm. the good person. But if yeah. you say, okay, my, my, my grandparent was, or like that person was rich and something happened to them, why they become, became people that don't trust or not trustworthy or not nice in certain, in certain behavior, you can just, you just start seeing uh, the life and people from the creator's side. You know, you, we don't know what brought these people, those souls to these actions. So it's just what is. There is no good, no bad. It's just what is and the experience that you want to have in your life. Instead of saying what I don't, it's like you go into a store and you have a list of what you don't want to buy. Do you do that, right? A lot of people nope. live with that. You go to a store and you, with the list what you do want to buy, right? Yeah. yeah. But a lot of people go to a store with the list that, you, that they don't want. They really know what they don't want, but they don't know what they do want. And that's just, okay. you know, a lot of, a, a lot of mind tricks that we have. It's irrational. Okay. So, so basically um, you think uh, or you feel, or yeah, maybe it's true, that, uh, that our ancestors have passed this gene and we have this uh, thing called dignity inside us that to feed, to serve. Okay. And that caused that drive uh, to help more people to give and uh, basically that works caused you to build this coaching industry. The dignity doesn't, doesn't give you the drive to help people. The dignity gives you the groundness. It's like okay. you, you, you feel secure. You feel that sure. you're good enough to create and mm -hmm. to do what you want to do. Rather right. than being being scared or saying I can't do that because each of us have these things like we we have bad moments, and then a lot of times we talk to people that are negative and they drag our energy out. Um, then we feel oh I can't do that. So in those cases, just don't make any decisions. When you feel really down and you think oh I suck, don't make any decisions. Just take a couple of days to restore yourself, or maybe at least one day. I never make any decisions from that standpoint because when I feel this way, that means my energy is low. When my energy is high, I never think bad and poorly about myself. Start noticing this thing. When you feel mm -hmm. bad, you, you probably spoke with the person that put some poison into your head or like just sucked out your energy. So just yep. give yourself 
Give yourself a day or two to recover and then make the important decision from that position. So it's important to get better. So uh, I also wanted to know what you think. That uh, um, you, how did you know that, uh, that you're, you have formed a better relationship, right? And uh, uh, that you have a really deep, uh, intense relationship with your mom as well. Uh, but uh, uh, after your mom died, uh, how did you really cope with that situation? That the thing, that attachment with your mom, and uh, how did this yeah, all, all happen? That's a, that's a, that's a great question, and many people ask me that. Uh, but honestly, I think people need to talk about this because losing your parent is a hard situation overall in life. It's like it's it's just very strong um, down moment. It was a very strong down moment in my life, but losing your mother especially when you had a strong bond that was just that honestly until now i think that this was the hardest thing for me in life and in the moment i i did not realize how it impacted my health how it impacted my psychology it was tough the one thing that i think is important to to settle with your parents is to if you have your parents and they're alive to tell them how you feel, to tell them how you felt, um, to have the adult conversation. And sometimes people don't have resources to do that because they, they fall back into the child position when they were traumatized because when there is a trigger happens um, that reminds us of the trauma that happened back in the childhood, we become that child. And even though if we, if we are an adult, we still have that um, that that child that was not protected, not loved, that was damaged in some way that we believe we were damaged. So uh, it's important to do therapy. It's important to work with the coach or, or a psychologist or a nice therapist. The, uh, that's just, you know, I am, I don't suggest, uh, that's just my opinion for me. I tried the classical therapist. That's not my cup of tea. I'm not, for some people it's, it's good. But I'm not into talking for 300 sessions about the situation and cry every time I do that. I'm more, I'm more into transformational therapy. I'm more into hypnotherapy. I'm more into neurolinguistic programming. I'm more into quantum therapy is my new thing that I think is just so fast and so effective. And what, what it takes, like, you know, 30 sessions and the regular therapy can be done in one session and it's just fantastic. This is what I do. This is what I discovered for myself. And I continue working on myself as a specialist and, and uh, to share that with my clients. Um, one thing that I can give to people that, that are listening to us today um, is a Hawaiian technique. And a lot of people know about that, but not a lot of people know how to use it correctly. Um, and I say correctly because at some point I started feeling and seeing energies. Um, and uh, I just figured out how to use it properly because before I was using it, I was like, oh, you know, that just doesn't make any sense. But now I understand all our emotions and all, all, all our traumas live in the body. There is a place in our body where that trauma was encapsulated. So it's very important first and foremost to connect to that place. Where do you feel that emotion, right? Do you feel it in the heart? Do you feel it in the throat? Do you feel it somewhere else, in the side, somewhere, right? So it's our body is like a map and our body knows so much more than our conscious mind. It's a different type of intelligence that is mystical still. Um, the four lines that are used for that, it's a Hawaiian technique. It's called Ho'oponopono. It's an oh, ancient oh. Hawaiian technique. H O O P O N O P O N O Ho O Pono Pono. It took me some time to get it, to, okay. <laughs> but I I can I can text it to you so that you know and you can share that with our audience. Uh, four lines: I'm sorry, I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. And then you chant. And before you start chanting that, whatever you want to work on, scan your body and feel. Let's just do an example. Are okay. you are you down for that? John, yeah, on. sure, sure. Uh, okay, so just, just let's close your eyes, take a deep breath in. Uh huh, and just scan your body and feel if there is any discomfort in your body. 
or you can think about some negative situation that happened to you recently or like keeps you tense yeah i got beaten yeah? by police okay you got beaten by boy i'm sorry that you had to go no, through this no po- police you probably you know <laughs> oh poli- police yeah. wow yeah. wow hardcore okay so yeah it was That's like due to lockdown i was not wearing the mask and they caught me and they give me a smash of that uh, blow oh my goodness okay that i mean that's horrible but that's perfect for our exercise connected yeah. in your body where do you feel the feeling about it the emotion about this event uh yeah in my legs in your legs uh huh yeah. so where start oh, it, it was not like that it was not that painful just it's an incident incident that's kept reminding well, me you don't, you don't, you, hey we're not judging here we're we're completely connected we're open and transparent the more you're human the more people can connect to you because hey we all suck at some situations and this is embarrassing and this is offensive that somebody could just trespass your 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 body your your sacred territory and it sucks but just try to focus on that on that feeling where is the epicenter of that feeling where does it start from while it goes into your legs where do you feel it in your body uh well this was just the incident i mean uh, it's a, it's a small no, incident just, maybe oh, yeah it's fine but you're you're correcting it you're like putting this tag on that what i'm asking you to is just feel it in your body and feel the emotion about it where does it feel in your body the emotion about this event small or large doesn't matter okay it's it's a small and your Not stomach probably the low lo- lower lower part of your stomach right uh, no i i feel it the incident uh, in that day i mean i i just feel it over over the place uh, where i got hit and uh, that's it uh-huh in other parts okay of the try to focus try to focus feel where the emotion about it like the emotion that you feel when you remember this where that emotion lives in your body emotion yeah what do you feel when you think about it what do you feel i feel that i shouldn't be at, at that place at that time i should have probably what, what, you see you give me the you give me the logical things you're running away from the emotion let's try to let's try to really feel about the emotion the emotion would be probably would be anger or or sadness or guilt. fear guilt guilt amazing yeah. where do you feel the guilt follow the guilt right now where do you feel the guilt and it's great that you that you like struggling with it so people all people struggle with this for the first time and then when you learn that you'll be like boom but feel that guilt where does it live in your body to really be honest with it connect with it in our in heart you, amazing fantastic so focus on that place and then say that to that guilt right now you're not talking about cops or whatever just to that guilt look at the guilt and say to it i'm sorry i'm sorry i didn't know i'm sorry i didn't, I didn't know, know a better way i didn't know a better way yeah yeah i love you for trying to protect me i love you for trying to protect me don't don't play just be be genuine like, you know? i'm really being myself i i just i just uh, yeah. stay to myself uh-huh. that way yeah but then you're so please good for, yeah <laughs> please forgive me for holding on to you oh uh, yeah please forgive me for, for holding, holding on to you. you uh-huh and thank you for coming and saying your your last goodbye and thank you for coming and saying the last goodbye and now we can do the short version i'm sorry I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh huh. Want to do that once again? Ah. Do it once again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. Uh, I love you. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh huh. Is anything changed? I mean, I'm, I have to do it a couple of times. <laughs> so uh, it, I have to do it a couple of times, maybe. Uh, because uh, lots of time uh, you have this uh, trauma inside you, or a small incident which has caused you to be bad. Uh, this stage. Uh, well, you see, you, you see this the small incident. We don't know, right? It's your left brain. It's your logic is reducting. This is small incident. This was not important to me. 
But if it lives in your body and if you feel guilt about it, your body feels it. It's your, your reductive mind said it's a small incident because I'm cool. I'm a man and I can't be too over, overly uh, feeling over that, right? For guys, it's actually harder to be in touch with their emotions because the world says, oh, you can't feel emotions. You can't cry. You can't be sissy. You have to be strong all the time, right? But it's important to be in touch with your emotions because when you are flexible about this, you actually, you lose the rigidity. When you're rigid, it's easy to break. But when you're, when you become more flexible and you know how to be in touch with your emotions, then you can do something about it rather than run away from the emotions. So that was a great exercise. But if you scan your body now, do you feel any, any change in your body about the emotions that you feel and the resonance that you feel about that small incident? Let's call it a small incident. Uh, well, most probably it feels like okay. It's okay. Right, the, the, the charge starts going away. So it's not that acute anymore. So we just did three times. But imagine if you could just sit there and you chant for like five to 10 minutes about something, you liberate yourself from that. And this is just a simple thing that I teach to people that they, they can use it in a, at home without any supervision because this, these lines, I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, thank you. They're so high vibrational. They're just, they're just um, acting as delete button. It's like delete, 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 and you start deleting all the negative experiences because you overrun it with the with the highly vibrational lines which is love apolog apologizing to yourself to that emotion because emotion is there it's stuck there because it wants to protect you and you're not communicating to the cops to whatever but you're communicating to that emotion that got stuck there because of the experience that your soul needed to receive and you understand the higher purpose behind that so that's mm -hmm. that's how i work this is the principle of how it works and of course when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, we have the techniques that allow us to go deeper uh, and, and faster. But this is just something that I wanted to share so it's useful for people that are watching us. Cool. Wow, this is amazing technique. I mean, uh, I've tried it once, but maybe I think uh, if I try it more and more, then uh, this, this would be a really beneficial. And for lots of people watching it who have faced trauma in their life, I mean, it's a good technique. I mean, really. Yeah, you guys, guys. You, you guys try it and then let Gunjan know how did it work out for you. <laughs> yeah, sure. And, uh, and uh, yes, leave your thoughts in the comment box as well. Like, how does it go for you guys? And, uh, like, you, you have this incident and uh, you have, you have been fallen into different relationships in the past as well. But how came, as you know, like I have, I, have, I was watching lots of posts and uh, from you, and I found that uh, you're, you have met your, like the husband that is with you right now, just uh, after seven days, your mom passed away, right? So how came you realized that, um, that he was the guy? And then, how did and, I realize uh, how my husband was the guy? Yeah, how, how did you do that? I, 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 hey, I still don't know. I, I figure it out every day. <laughs> <laughs> there right. is no, you see, people, people want, I think this is the biggest trap that people get into. They want, they, they read the books about forever, ever after. And for one, they, they don't, um, because it's, there is so much pressure that if I make a decision, it has to be once and forever and then you're like holy shit it's going to be forever this person must be perfect mm -hmm. and then you look around and there are no perfect people because we're just people right yeah, yeah. and you're like i'm not going to get into a relationship because like you know that guy should be pearl that girl should be perfect you know she's not good enough for me for my forever ever after yep. that's one thing and another thing is when you just allow yourself to, to get into it and to, to feel your heart, your body. And we just had a conversation today in the morning with my husband. And I said, when I, when I was getting into a relationship before, I thought that uh, marriage was relationship, like long lasting relationship was about passion and love 
and uh, understanding and, and it just being perfect, perfect parents, perfect picture. And today I understand that the marriage itself has nothing to do with sexuality, with passion. It's great when you have it in your marriage, but mostly the number one priority in, in the marriage is, is friendship is can you be yourself? Because marriage and long-term relationship, how I see this, and I don't want to discourage you guys and say like, oh, you need to go and marry your, your best friends. No, it's, you will have passion and you will have the, the sexuality in your marriage, but it, it will come and go and that's okay. And that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. Um, the marriage is about, I think that your, your, your life partner for the moment, right? Uh, it's your greatest mirror because your partner, people to get into a relationship, they have to be courageous and they have to be, if they're really interconnected and they're, if they're connecting, you know, some, sometimes relationships, people just like live in their corners of the house. They don't mm -hmm. even communicate much. And that's yep. not a relationship, right? That's just like, co like room mating. <laughs> We're not talking about that. But if you're really connected, um, this is the metaphor that I like to give. So imagine a sandbox, like, mm -hmm. you know, like a kindergarten, kindergarten sandbox. And you, you get into your sandbox and this is your life. And then a lot of people complain that some other people come into their sandbox and they trash there and they throw their sand in their face and they make a mess and they ruin something that they built. But hey, this is your sandbox. You have to put the rules of your sandbox. This is what you can do this here. This is what you cannot do. This is what I, what I expect. And uh, this is what, you know, that, that, I, that I want to have my, my sandbox like. And then if you don't communicate those rules, why people don't communicate those rules? Oh, I want them to like me. And people in the beginning, they meet each other and they're like on their best behavior right but then like six months into they're like showing their real colors right mm -hmm. uh -huh. and then the other person feels like dude you 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 tricked me right you were different now you're this so so people feel frustrated but they're already in the relationship but you see if you look if you walk on your tippy toes all the time you, you can walk for on your tippy toes for a month or two or three or six right after a year, you're like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to put my foot on because mm -hmm. that's the comfort. And that's why I'm saying that your partner is your partner. You need to connect and you need to accept yourself. And you need to understand that whether you're going to be messed up or not, whatever happens, your weaknesses, your shortcomings, and your brilliance as well. Some people can't tolerate their partner's brilliance as well right? because they're so insecure. So that's the common ground. It's like, are you willing to wake up every day and to recommit into this relationship? Are you willing, if something bothers you, to open up your mouth and honestly say, hey, I'm not feeling comfortable. Like I woke up yesterday and, and like at night, I just realized something about my husband, right? And I was so angry all night <laughs> and I was like sleeping in my bed. I was like angry. I woke up angry and my husband wakes up and he's like, I love you. And I'm like looking at him like this. <laughs> And he's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm so angry at you. <laughs> like, good morning, right? Instead of good morning, I'm so angry at you. He's like, what happened? <laughs> and he was like, what happened, right? I was like, I don't know. I just realized that you're like, like you're doing something, but you're not achieving that result because you're sabotaging yourself because you're in a child's position, right? Living with a psychologist. Like, this is how messed up my life is. <gasps> And he is like, okay, let's talk about this, right? So in the morning, we wake up and we have this conversation. And after I, we spoke it out, I feel much better, right? I, I spoke it out with my partner. And he knows that it's, it's not me against him. He knows that this is just my, this is my experience of him. This mm -hmm. is something that triggered in me the fact that I see a child in him sometimes and he's annoying me doing that because I, I jump into the parenting position and because I don't mm. let myself to be a child in this situation. So my, my own child is repressed. And then when he shows me his child right in my face, 
I'm like annoyed with that. How dare you? I don't let my child to go to go loose, and you and you show me your child right in my face, <laughs> right, and it annoys me. That's why I'm saying that your partner will be your number one mirror, because whatever you're not accepting in yourself, whenever I feel that I I I'm not successful, I start bitching at my husband and I say, "You should be successful." And he's like, what's happening? I'm like, oh my God, I need to feel, I don't feel successful. I'm projecting it on you, right? But this is the conscious conversation of two adult people that are pretty conscious about their psychology and how they, uh, their feelings. Majority of people just live with the projections of their parents. Uh, separation from the parent, from mother and father is extremely important. In the beginning, I met my husband and I was shoving my mom into him and he was shoving his mom into me. And then I've been showing my, showing like putting in like my, my father into him. And I was trying to solve my childhood issues with my parents through him because he was the just perfect frame for that picture of mine that I've been running around with. So relationship is a, is a massive point of growth if you're willing to do the work. If you just want to fuck around and just have fun, you probably... You know, you probably don't need to go into a long-term relationship because if you think about a relationship, what do you want to get from it? So, you and John, what do you want to get from a relationship? Uh, most honest. probably, it's, it's the growth. Yeah, it's the growth. Uh, I mean, it's what? a new. It's a growth and a new a, a, a major journey. That's what growth and journey. Yeah. Let me ask you a question: To get growth and journey. Do you really need to be in a relationship? Um, well, it's not. It's, it's not that. Uh, yeah, sure. Yep. Because uh, by myself, um, I can grow only. Yes a or no? Bit. No. I so, say yeah. Yes. Yes. I need to be in the relationship to grow. Yes. <laughs> because right now, are you growing? Right now, we having conversation. Are you growing right now? Yeah, I'm growing. But uh, we're we're not in a relationship. You're no, uh, uh, yeah, I'm still growing, but that's a different level of growth. You see, um, okay, like a child be with their parents, that's a different level of growth, and they be with their friends, that's a different level of growth. They be with a stranger, that's a different level of growth. What I believe, <laughs> and they with the partner, that's a different level of growth. So you want to so. grow as a man? Is that what you're saying? Uh, as a partner. Uh, as a partner. So yeah. here's the thing. Remember our sandbox, right? Yeah. And I think you only need to go into a relationship when you already played on your own and you feel that you're fulfilled and you have fun with yourself. A lot of people go into a relationship because of the void, the gap that they have. A lot of people go into a relationship. If I find a husband or a wife, I will finally be happy. Then they're not happy. They're like, if I'm going to get a kid, then I'm going to be happy. That's not so true. So they want to fill the trap. void. So they want to fill the Only, void. Yes. But that's a trap. But that's also, you know, karma of certain people. That's also an experience. My, uh, my um, belief that you need to go into a relationship when you're already comfortable with yourself on your own, mm -hmm. then you can go into a relationship because you've been playing in your sandbox alone and you're having fun. But if there is time that comes and you want to play with somebody in that sandbox. You don't want to play on your own. You want to create together. You want to grow together. You want to have kids together. It's also an act of creation. You are the part, the spark of creator of God, creating something on this earth through another person. And then in the union, you that's like the union of a man and a woman, the sexuality of it, the acceptance of each other. It, it is a connection to the creative energy, to, to God. And then through that, you create the child, you create the life, you create projects. That's all creative energy. And partnership and, and romantic relationship and partnership in, uh, in business, it's very similar. Uh, only in, in romantic relationship, you have intimacy and that's, that's the glue that can connect or disconnect people. And you have to be ready to go through that. And, and it's also, you know, sexuality is also a big thing, especially for women. 
uh, and I'm I'm probably I think that probably there are a lot of guys watching and not many not many men. But for you guys, is is um is it just a great thing if you are ready to to accept a woman as she is and to encourage her to express her sexuality and to express and to understand her her freakouts, right? Because we women are crazy. We get hormonized and, you know, we just can just be a tropical storm hitting you every time. But a woman picks, pokes you and she tests you all the time. Are you going to be that rock that stands there? Even if I go crazy, are you going to be there standing and say, bring it on, baby, <laughs> you know, hit your tropical storm at me. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> And this is what my husband to me, because I can, and trust me, I'm, I'm like the, the mastermind manipulator, right? I studied hypnotherapy. I studied neurolinguistic programming. I can, I can work with energies. I can break or make people. And my husband, my amazing husband is my rock because I know even if I'm going to go crazy, he just be standing there like, want to talk about this? Or if I go crazy and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm attacking him, right? What I love about my husband, he has dignity. He says, um, okay, I, I can see you, you feel very strongly about this, but I don't appreciate you talking to me in this tone. So let's maybe calm down and then we can continue talking this conversation if you want to talk about it calmly and respectfully, would that be okay? And I'm like, oh, you know, hearts in my eyes because I love a strong man. And he's not abusively strong. He's like, oh, shut up, you know, go, go, whatever. You know, we have, we all know about those relationships. But he, he comes from dignity and from his mature, um, masculine strength. And that's the sexiest thing ever for a woman, you know, because she feels cared for, but he also has boundaries. And I think it's important to create for both, for men and women to create this, this safe space where your partner can be anything and you know that it's not personal against you. You just know how, how they're experiencing the world right now. But that takes a lot of consciousness to, to not to fall in pieces because our partners will, will test all our weak spots. But that's the growth point. That's what my point was about, the growth. Beautiful. I mean, it's really beautiful to hear a lot of things that he uh, spoke. Uh, it's coming from a really deeper uh, perspective where you experience and it's a really great insight can help lots of people who are watching this. And, uh, and the things about like, uh, so that, um, that energy, like masculinity, it's like a stronger thing. I mean, you have told us previously you know, why some guy don't, don't get too much emotional. Maybe it's the reason that they have, they need to be, because uh, it's, it's a kind of a female thing that a female most of the time that they, they, they got into this emotional side, but uh, maybe a guy needs to be strong that they can handle their emotion and a, create a strong uh, a, a standpoint so that they can deal with the emotion. Maybe that's the reason a guy uh, I mean, what your husband is doing is really great job, and uh, yeah, that, uh, like uh, I want to really ask what you were saying. Like, uh, how is it to be a platinum partner in Tori Robbins community, and how is the experience? Uh, you go and you apply, and you um, oh. put a particular amount of money. Mm -hmm. uh, at that moment, when I joined it, it was seventy-five thousand a year dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, you also pay for airfare and lodging, whatever you fly to. No, or what is the experience and, like? <laughs> I, I was just. Oh, uh, I thought I thought learning. you were asking me how to get into. No, 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 not that. <laughs> I was experience. What did you uh, learn? Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, how that things that really transform your life. I, I saw that um, you get you getting into some great things and all, uh, changing. I mean, uh, you're meeting lots of people. So there must be some uh, changes that's been there that caused you to. Uh, moved into the and start that this uh, business in mean, industry. So how was that experience? Like how? What kind of effect does that it really give to you? That uh, that. It's not. It's not Tony that forced me to do the business. Those are two no, separate no. things. The reason. No, no. The I, reason I, why I, was, I, I, I Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was not asking that uh, Tony that, but the, there there was some kind of experience, right? That uh, that helped you to just uh, that uh, that 
that rocket up. I mean, there there was some kind of thing that really uh, t- uh, you, that helped you to think about more about psychology. Like you took into Russian psychology, you took interest in hypnotherapy. Like after the after Very you moved into. Very simple. I was I was curious about it. This is something mm-hmm. that turned me on. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is something that I wanted to understand, and I was helping myself. And through helping myself, I was getting better, and I was helping other people. That's it. So it was one not about the. Uh, it was not about the, the platinum. You, yeah. No, it wasn't about the platinum world. I'm telling you, these things, right. these, these things are separate. Uh, right. Some, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you need to know that you need to do something that fuels you. Something that is from one side or another is you're curious about. Because if you don't like numbers and you become an accountant and then mm-hmm. you sit there and calculate numbers and you hate it, you're not going to enjoy it, right? My husband loves numbers. I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, just go away with your numbers. Like, but I had to learn the numbers or I had to hire somebody because if I want to have a successful business, I need to know my numbers. So I'm more of like an artist in my in my work and I'm more of like a manager rather than uh, than a producer and, and, um, or, but whatever I suck at, I need to hire a person or partner up with a person who is great at that. Otherwise it's not going to work because in order to have a successful business, you need to have three elements. You need to have planning, you need to have organization, and you need to have responsibility. If you don't have any of these three elements, your business will fall apart. Another thing that you need to know and, and have is acceptance of your father. One thing that I notice about, like, this is just energy thing, um, but it extremely influences the businesses. If you uh, judge your father, if you don't accept your father, or God forbid, you don't have a father, um, then it's really, really hard to build a successful business because your father energy is responsible for your achievement, is responsible for you drive for success and is responsible for your relationship with power. Um, so I see a lot of people that start building up their businesses, but then they don't have good relationship with their father. They're judging them or they never met them and they didn't work it out in therapy. And then they sabotage their businesses. They lose everything and then they restart. It happened to me. So yeah. It happened to me. So tell me about uh, tell me about your uh, experience. Yeah. What happened? Uh, well, um, like uh, lots of time, because uh, I don't know for a fact why it happens, but uh, it's like uh, you have this, this avoid this ignorance uh, behavior, which comes to places, and uh, uh, most of the time, people what they do is that they blame upon their parents because why they can't achieve well, or why they would do certain things. So that affects in the long term. So it's really uh, what helped me is to be responsible in my own life, it, uh, else than uh, blaming my father or other things that I have been been through some from childhood. So it really helped me when I was responsible in every way. And uh, you 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 were in touch with your father, right? Yeah, yeah. Or not? Yeah. yeah. So how is your just... relationship with your dad? Uh, it was like it was not that good. It's kind of average, uh, but it's it's been like improving. So do I feel it right? Let me let me let me uh, test my psychic skills. <laughs> if I feel it right, your your dad is very, uh, very controlling man. Yeah, uh, that's the word. <laughs> Yeah, and he likes to control himself. He's very hard on himself, and he's hard on people that in the family, the people that surround him. Um, I can't say that, um, but yeah, because he have faced a difficult situation, a poverty. He came from really a uh, poverty background, so uh, he, he really, really um, likes to, to control uh, economy and uh, family member, like how they should do, what they should do. So they don't waste the uh, resources and all. So yeah. So that's and, uh, <laughs> and I don't know why it comes that about your mom, but she she kind of lives in the past. I don't know. You don't know that. But just I'm just I'm just trying to feel about what's going on, because you see, your mom and your dad. This is your basis. 
And your dad and your mom, this, this is the constant programming that you will be carrying in yourself, right? You're half of your mom and half of your dad. That's mm -hmm. why I'm saying we need to learn how to appreciate our dad and our mom and everything that they gave to us. Because if I say my mom is bad or my dad is bad, I say the half of me is bad, right? And when I know that genetically and unconsciously, I can't build anything because, because I'm half bad. I don't deserve. That influences directly our dignity, our internal I'm good enough. Uh, element. So let me ask you differently. Do you, do you tend to live in the past? Like to, 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 to feel that you go in the past and future is just too scary sometimes. And it gives you anxiety. No, or like, uh, no, I've, I've been, I've been, uh, for, for a long time, I've been visualizing things that will happen in the future. And it's, it's, it's like happening every single day. So I'm, I'm somewhat closer to my grand vision. So it's like more like I'm living in the future. I'm being myself in the present state because uh, there's a lot of things that I've learned so you're, from. So you're more, you're more in, in your dad. You're more in control. And because of uh, the control, you have this power of the moment. <laughs> Some more. Because, um, because uh, you know, you know the, the, there's something that uh, you like about yourself and you like about your mom and there's something you don't like about your dad uh, and that's that's something what affects me most of the time um, but i think that uh, I mean, every people is different they have different uh, perspective upon life so so yeah we need to cope with that but that's what i feel like you can't just see if someone who is like a, too much pessimistic again you can go hey you're a pessimist you can't say someone who's too much optimistic. Hey, you're so good. You're an optimist. You can't say it like that, right? Who is, so, who is pessimist? And who is pessimist in your family? So, my dad. <laughs> your so, dad? Yeah, yeah, because he used to feel the the, the some sometimes that the the, the the guilt or whatever the, the wrong decision that he has made in his life, and he don't want me to make that those wrong decisions. So most of the time when, uh, when I am like uh, want to take some action challenges, of course I failed in my life miserably. Uh, lots of times I have wasted money, resources. So he's always too afraid and he's so that you're gonna make that. Uh, you're gonna do it. You, you'll make a shit again. And, uh, and, and that's what affects me. No, I, I'm too confident. Uh, I, ca I can create a business. And no, you are playing dumb. You're playing stupid. <laughs> So this one of the things that always happens. So like uh, whenever then you see somebody who is like too optimistic and uh, they see the possibility and you move draw towards them. Oh yeah, do you know what I, my idea is? So that's thing what happens, you know. How do you feel when 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 you hear that? Like when when you hear your father voice in your head, oh you you made shit, whatever, and you're not gonna you're not gonna succeed. How does it make you feel? Uh. Is 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 affect my confidence? <laughs> that's what I feel, and that's it what again? I don't it like. It it affects my confidence, my confidence okay. inside me. Yeah, that's what, and I don't like that. So, I like, I want to, I want to yeah, grow my so, confidence. So that's the thing. Yeah. So this is what I call living in the past. That's what I meant, so that you understand. Okay. Because that your your past is kind of like hanging there, and it holds you back. So for you, you need to understand that that was inevitable. You needed to fail. And um, what holds you back? What do you think? Why you're not where you want to be in life yet? What is that holding you back? Mm -hmm. And thank you for doing this, by the way. If you don't want to do that, don't do that. But like, no. I think it's very interesting. And you're super open about this. And I think it's a great example for people. I think uh, what holds me back is that my own limiting self-belief upon that dream, or maybe I, I don't have enough knowledge. I have to study lots of things. So uh, it's lack of resources, lack of knowledge, what I feel is what affects most people and affects me as well, that I don't have proper knowledge, exact knowledge, because when I'm, I have done the knowledge, then I'm confident that I can do it. But when I have small, uh, like, a, a little amount of knowledge, 
I'm not too, too, I can't be confident because I can explain my dad about it. And my dad uh, asks lots of questions uh, or he just, uh, he just tests me by, by or I think he tests me because like I saying that uh, you ain't going to do it. Uh, it ain't going to happen. So I think at that time I feel very bad because I don't have that knowledge because I know that there's some people who have experience and knowledge can really uh, uh, make my dad understand what I'm trying to say. But uh, that's what I did. Kanjan, thank you so much yeah. for sharing this. And this is what I, this is exactly what I mean, control. I want to know everything so that I can have control, right? And control gives me the sensation of power. And I just want to tell you that these are just emotions. And you can already, the moment you, you, you register that that feeling comes to you, oh, I want to know the control, that's the moment when you start developing. Because you're, uh, it, this is something that I do is called systemic modeling. And your second point is your dad, uh, point of entry. And your dad's emotions are control. He tries to control, he tries to know everything so that he can control everything and that gives him certainty. The moment you start feeling you're entering the point when you need to control everything as your dad, that's the moment when you start growing. And that's, right. and that's the moment when you need to say, oh, I recognize this emotion. This is awesome. I'm growing right now. Instead of like, oh, shit, <laughs> turning away from that, right? The moment that, that, that emotion comes to you, you're like, amazing. I'm getting there. Uh, for, I'm going to give you an example. For me, in order for me to start to, to have clients, uh, my motion of attracting clients, and that's again, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very complex system that I do. I'm just going to give you the facts of that. Um, my motion to have clients, I need to feel scared and confident. <laughs> All right. And uh, fear is my mom's emotion and confidence is my dad's emotion. This is my basis, right? So in order to have clients, this is particularly for me that doesn't have to do anything for, with you, for example. This is very individual. So for me, the moment I start feeling, I used to be like, oh my God, I'm going to mess it up again, right? The clients will come. So in order to have clients, I need to be afraid that they will come. This is like the paradox that how our unconscious mind works. Okay. And, and for me, the moment now, if I, if I start feeling fear that the clients will come to me, I know this is when my clients come to me. So I'm happy for that. So for you, the moment you feel, oh, I'm out of control. Holy shit. I need to bring control together. That's the moment for you to grow. That's when you grow the most. So recognize that feeling that comes to you. And the thing okay. when you, when you, when you live in the past, when you live in the past, you also can recognize this is the past feelings that come to me and they say, this is what happened in the past. So in that moment, you can say, I'm sorry, I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. Right. That's, that's, wow. that's the communication with the emotion with your past. Your soul needed that experience in order to come to the level where you are right now. So living in the past is not necessary because you see, for example, this is in my past right now and it's in mm -hmm. my past. But if I continue bringing it here in my future, what am I going to have? The same experience that I had in my past, I will fail again. Mm -hmm. But if I remove this and I put this into the past and I stop living in the past, I come forward in the moment, what stays here? What is here now? Uh, nothing. Just a new. Nothing. Yeah. And if you have nothing here, what can you create? Anything. Anything. Anything, Anything that you want. See, you're yeah. so talented. You just get it right away. So stop bringing the past here because this was experience. Maybe it's a failure, this one kind of failure. Maybe it's going to be another failure here, but it's going to be a different experience. You know how many times my husband failed? Oh my God, it's been like months of like failing and failing, but he's, a, he's an IT person, right? And they're just taught that after an X amount of failure, it's just people just so afraid to fail gotta have fun failing you're like okay i fucked up ha 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 <laughs> next <laughs> that's amazing just being vulnerable <laughs> just being vulnerable vulnerable about it like as coaches we feel that we need to be perfect humans we have no right for a mistake that's bullshit because if you know never make a mistake how can you explain another person how to get out of this shit you can't so you must fail true yep. or false 
Yeah, it's true. Uh, like uh, what you just said is is remarkable. I mean, uh, the thing that is holding you back, the past, uh, the similar experience uh, will show if this past remains the same. So uh, with that, I can. I, uh, what we're trying to say is that that we should not hold any expectation in the future, so that the future is nothing. So we just. Yeah. Good luck with that. We're still going to have the expectations, but yeah. it depends what kind of expectations you have. You can have an expectation. You can wake up and you can preframe yourself. You know what preframing is? Um, when I, I wake know. up and I, and I make myself feel in a certain way. So there was an experiment uh, when people in, on the streets were asked to, to hold a cup of coffee. And then another person who was an actor, they came to them and they said, would you please read a little read a little text about the character in the text and would you tell us how you feel so uh they they were they were asked to hold the coffee and then after that another person would come to them and they were asked them to read that that uh text and they would give them like 20 bucks and say just just tell us what you think about the character in the story so they would read the story and you know what's interesting half of the people said that the character was really nice trustworthy kind and warm and the other part said that it was cold not trustworthy they would never get in touch with them and this the story was the same guess what was different coffee yeah how because coffee create like a caffeine coffee has caffeine and it makes you feel good was that the reason uh, the the right answer was uh, they they gave half of the people they get they gave the iced coffee and the other half of the people they gave the warm coffee so they were testing how the temperature affects our perception all right so think about That's it. Right. think I about mean, it is a freaking if a temperature of a freaking coffee can influence our perception and how we see the world. Would you like to have would you like to have control over how you preframe yourself rather than somebody else preframes you? You see how sensitive we are to whatever comes from the world and how much we need to protect our mind and our energy within ourselves in order to to get go there and create. So what you mean is that anything can happen? anything can happen and if you're unconscious so tony gives this example and i love it he said um if your enemy will will put a strychnine into your coffee and you drink it what's going to happen you know strychnine is a is a mortal poison people are going to die then <laughs> yeah so if yeah, yeah so yeah. now if your friend accidentally instead of sugar puts strychnine into your coffee what's going to happen to you you're gonna die. <laughs> Anywhere you're gonna yeah. die. So, so the, the, the moral that Tony brings into that, he says, whether it's an enemy or a friend or a close person, watch your fucking coffee. <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> That's a great point. Guys, what, what you just said, a cold coffee, hot coffee, not trick man, anything can happen. It's all about, <laughs> but, it's all about co conversation is about coffee, yeah. not. <laughs> So, so that that means that uh, it's it's great to have a control of of our the knowledge of where the things is going. That means it's fine to have a control. You're not, you're not gonna have control of what's happening, of knowledge. Mm -hmm. The only thing which you can control really is how do you react to that, and All do right. you engage in the worthless conversations, and why are you trying to prove others wrong and you right. What are you trying to prove to yourself in the first place? Because if you know that you're right, you don't need to prove anything to anyone. You can, you can understand that this, you're living your destiny and your karma and other people living there, your loved ones, your dad, your, your mom, they're here to live their own life and you don't need to convince them in something. What you need mm -hmm. to focus on is to find the like-minded people that are your community that have the same vibe that you do and do they're just little less developed or they have little less knowledge or confidence than you are and you just connect mm -hmm. with them and you just help them out you don't need to prove anybody else that you you deserve people you know you don't need to prove me or tony robbins that you deserve 
What you need right. to do is to find people that know a little less than you and experience a little less than you and they're a little less confident than you are and to start helping them to build up. And while you will build up them, you will build up yourself and you go on the next level. That's what you, growth never stops. You continue growing all the time. That's worthwhile. Thank I always you. used to think that I need to be with the experienced person to learn lots of stuff, but this is a new perspective that you grow confidence by uh, uh, being with people who, is, uh, who know less than you and less confidence you experience things and all. That's all the, you, all the you, 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 you also need to be on the level with people that know more than you. You, you, more than. you need to learn somewhere, right? Yeah, okay. Then you have your peers, people that know same than you, similar level. And then you have people that know less than you. And less that's than. okay. And remember one thing. The moment when you think you got into the next level. <laughs> actually, the moment you think that you are on the head of the previous level. When you're growing, growing, growing fast, and you get into the next level, you get into the ass of the next level. We get into that. The... Yeah, we get. The we mo- get. Into... Okay, I'm gonna say yeah. this again. The moment yeah. you think you're on the yeah. head, on the previous level, and you grew so okay. much, and okay. you go into the next level, you you get into the ass of the next yeah. level. All right. Okay. So it's just a starting. Like you're just a junior in the no, other level. Growth will never stop. Never you stop. will never go on the level where you feel, oh, I grew enough. That that means you die. That's okay. it. Because when you while you're alive, you will always feel in the development. And it's not about coming to the place when you feel, oh, I'm enough. It's okay. about starting to work where you are and providing okay. for those who have less than you. Okay, I, I'm. I have, I have just a few last questions to ask you, and uh, these things I've really been curious for my whole life. I know people who are in this community are are also very curious about it. Cause lots of people are asking me, like Gunja, uh, can can you get somebody who's like, a, is it hypnotist, hypnotherapy? Um, and some people are learning as well in this community. They are studying hypnotherapy, psychology. Okay, so can you tell me, like, you are like master hypnotist? Okay, so what is like hypnotherapy? What is this? I don't know about it. Like seriously, and how is like to hypnotize some people? Like, <laughs> what is that? Can you make people? I'm a, uh, I'm a, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm a okay. clinical support hypnotherapist. Master okay. hypnotist is more of like a performance hypnosis when when you know people go on stage and then do the, the hypnotic tricks. Um, Here is the thing: hypnosis is a natural state of mind. So right now, for example, I can tell you, um, focus on your left toe on your left foot and bring your attention there. And as you bring your attention there, you notice that my voice is slowing down. And I'm taking a pause and you're noticing that pause. And there is somewhere in your head where that noticing started happening. And as you start noticing this, something in your body might change and you start per- perceiving something different. And maybe as now as I'm, as I'm talking, you forgot of something that been happening outside on the street. And now, as I said, that you start hearing no- noises from the street and you become aware and you see how your attention travels. I take your attention on the journey, right? And then remember when we did the exercise, when I said, notice where that guilt lives in your body and your attention traveled throughout the body and it says it's in your heart, it's in your chest. So you brought your attention there. So it's a natural state of mind. Sometimes you, I don't know if you drive a car, but then sometimes you're driving or you you ride a bicycle and you you just park your bicycle and you're like, who was riding or who was driving? I totally forgot. I know I know this path so much, so well, that I don't even need to think about it. So you are unconscious about it. Your unconscious mind did this. And you were in something that's called trance. So trance is a natural state of being for a human. And we go through several trances. You you look into your girl, love the girl that you love, her eyes. And, and you, you just lose track of time and mm-hmm. losing track of time is another sign of, of uh, what's called 
uh, trance, Hypnosis. right? Uh, yeah, it, it, that's a trance state. So uh, therapeutically, uh, it's been it's been found that that this state, this resourceful state, is the entry point into our unconscious mind because until we are analyzing something this monkey monkey mind the chatter all the time yeah, analyzing yeah. and eating 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 right uh, until this is working uh the analytical part actually suppresses the unconscious mind and then when you go into the feeling state when you actually don't think about anything you go into that state and it's a very resourceful state it's this is actually the state where your body recovers when your digestive system and reproductive system is is working the best. Uh, sex is also trans, right? Um, sometimes people uh, binge it, you know, like when you watch a horror movie and then you're like really with your attention there and then somebody like slams the door and you're like, oh! <laughs> that's the trance being broken. <laughs> wow. So, I... so th this is a natural thing. And then you can use the trance to bring your attention to your internal traumas in a therapeutic way. And this is extremely powerful. And I'm not a big adept. I'm, I'm not a big fan of going into very deep trance because when you're in a deep trance, people just start drooling and they're just like, oh, I'm just checking out. And like, I just want to really go in. And, but they still hear you, right? But you can't do the work. You can't do the trauma release you can do um you can't program people and thing uh in a way that that they really will remember that and they can remember that on the unconscious level on the conscious as well so this is how i feel how i feel the hypnosis is the most effective number one uh people say that oh people can be hypnotized into anything that's not true that's just the the the, the fairy tales that the movies show us that you know somebody can be hypnotized to go and rob the bank this is bullshit uh it's not working like that otherwise i'll be controlling the world already i'll be like cooler than putin uh, so your you your unconscious mind has moral compass and ethics built in so nothing that can bypass your ethics and moral compass or your security guards um will be will be taking the program moreover if you want, so for example, you want me to hypnotize you to be successful, right? Or to lose weight. Sometimes I can give the suggestions, the hypnotic suggestions to people and they will accept that if they're willing to accept that. Nobody can hypnotize if you don't want to be hypnotized, period. Uh, you will come off of it. You, you can get into it for like several seconds and then you bounce back and you come to consciousness. That's it. So it's very, uh, it, it's all bullshit. People that get on stage and they start clocking as a, as a chicken, they want to be hypnotized, right? So it's not, you can't force that on, on somebody. That's, that's just for fact. Now, another thing, if I want, if you want to be hypnotized for success, for example, or I make $20,000 plus per month, um, I need to check in your unconscious mind if anything is against that. Because for example, uh, let's say your, your grandfather was killed for making too much money you generationally have a program. I cannot be wealthy because I will be killed. That's a self-protection program that is generationally passed to you. And until we work out that program, I, you, you will not accept the program, the, the suggestion that you are successful and you make because that, that is perceived by your unconscious mind that this is a lot of money for you. Then the mind says we don't want to, we need to survive so your primary need in this world is to survive for your body and your unconscious mind so this is how it works you first remove the block and then you put the suggestions and then you repeat the suggestions the affirmations and you and you start changing and your world start changing your perception of the world start changing this is one of the ways how to work with this Wow, that's amazing. Like uh, the, the things that um, the conscious mind, unconscious mind, and the, the new thing is that uh, you can't get hypnotized if you, if you don't want to get hypnotized. That means that uh, the things that we see in the movie and all is like a, pretty much a, 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 a false. That's, I mean, a movie. Like, that, that's, that, that's, that's just a movie. I mean, 
So, so like uh, nobody can make you fall in love if you don't want to fall in love. And uh, no. um, that's it. I mean, and the, the thing about that successful is that people really want to have that thing to be successful and only then somebody can hypnotize them. But they already have it. Like what they want to do, have hypnotize them. <laughs> Yeah, well, somebody can make you fall in love, what they call, it's called uh, uh, energetical influence, simply magic, you know, and what is magic is uh, the ability, who's the magician, who's the sorcerer, right? Uh, we're going to touch a little bit of esoterics, because I also work with this. Um, basically, a sorcerer is a person who can organize their energetic and time space. Uh, so people can work that work with energies. They can, they can disconnect you from the main sources of energies. If you are falling for that, if you not strong enough, uh, energetically, and it's all about, you know, who's ranking higher. So they disconnect you for, from example, from mother earth, and they can connect you energetically to, to the person who wants you to fall in love with them. Right. But then it's really, you've probably heard of these things. But this is a really hardcore way because the person who is, the, who is ordering that, now they need to work energetically for two people. And they feel drained. And this person who is the, it's called the victim, they, they feel bad without that person. They hate them when they meet, but they can't live without them because their life force is connected to them. So that's the, the energy influence if we're talking about that. So there is a way to do that, but it's, you know, the price is high. Just as wow. Well. Like it's, it, it, it's, it's a different level of information. Like, I've never heard this type of thing before. <laughs> like, energetically. Yeah, well, it's, very, it's, it's very popular in Russia. It's very popular in Ukraine, uh, Bali, Indonesia. They all, like, they do sorcery left and right. It's, like, crazy. And, uh, you know, it, it exists. Um and um, you know, if you if I I work with people, I need to be aware of that because for me, for so, example, I started as a hypnotherapist. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I started as a hypnotherapist, and then I started learning about. I work with people, and then I feel after some people, I feel drained, like drained, like I'd be shivering, and like my hands would be blue, and I couldn't understand what was going on. Uh, but then I learned that I actually had ability to heal people. And it's just, you know, I, ju I just could do that. I just didn't know how. I would just, with my intention, I wanted people to get well. So I would take my bioenergy and I would just pour it into, into the person and they will eat it up. And then I'll be shaking. And then they feel good and they go home. So I had to learn about energies and how this thing works because I, I just was forced into this. I did not want to do this, but I, I was forced and I needed to educate myself and then, you know, I started having people coming to me with things that other coaches can't deal with uh, because they're just coaches. And I was like, okay, I guess this is my gift. This is what God gave me, like, you know, to see energies, to feel that and to work with this. And although in the beginning, I was like, I'm like, like left brainer. I was like completely like, no, don't give me this kumbaya thing. So I was running from that for years, but then I was forced into that. So, you know, had to accept it. You really naturally feel that you can you can heal people and uh, you can change people's life or something like that. Maybe that's the reason why you started as a coach. I mean, is that true? Like you, you uh, feel that? Yeah, I felt that. I felt that from my was when since I was a kid, but I did not want to do that. I didn't honestly. I was an asshole. I didn't want to take care of people. I didn't want to like deal with the people's you know traumas they come and they dump it all on, on you i was like i don't want to deal with this i just want to make money like bye bye but you know destiny is destiny yeah <laughs> and you, the more you run the, the the more miserable you feel and then when i when i came back on my path that's the happiest i've ever felt because this is my destiny and this is my mission and i have to carry this mission and the moment i understood it, I, I i learned the wisdom of that um, which I appreciate and the whole new world opened up to me and um, I'm just in harmony with myself and my, my, my soul, my spirit and my heart is all connected and all my mind as well. So I think, I think finding, finding what it is 
for is right for you. And deep down, we all know. Deep down, we know what what is that we need to do in this world. But for some reason, for some logical concept that was adopted from the world or parents or whatever, we we don't want to see that. We're like, uh, uh-uh, I don't see this Mm-mm. blind spot. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> But it's all about maturity. Yeah. And, and uh, is there a way, okay, if a person is too much self-harming and uh, they're just having a suicidal uh, thinking, beliefs, uh, 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 limiting beliefs, uh, and uh, living in poverty, can't get rid of from that, and, uh, and they're sucked in, okay, is there a way to help some, uh, some, this type of people, pessimistic people? Like, uh, there are lots of people who have talked in previously, and I feel that, I don't feel that there's any way to get out of the, this person, out of their, out of the misery. So can they help themselves, like through, what about this, this hypnotism, or through coaching, psychology, can, can, can these people be helped? Uh, of course. But these people can be only helped when they want to be helped. Here's the thing. And you as a coach need to understand something that it took me several years to understand. You cannot force good on people. I know you want to save the world, but, and you're like, oh, let me just, you know, fire hose you with the goodies. (laughs) But, but. You cannot do that because he, there is a meaning. It's, it's, it's destiny. And some people need to go through misery for their soul to grow. And some, even though consciously they will say, I don't want to do that. Of course, nobody wants to suffer consciously. But for the soul development level, for example, for me, I needed to be traumatized to accept the violence from my brother, to accept that my mom's, um, uh, you know, that I believe that my mom didn't love me. But when I, when I really accepted that and I really forgave, the, the amount of love in my heart chakra that opened up, the amount of ability and capacity to love other people opened up so drastically. And this is how our soul grows. Because if you come to this world and you don't have no problems, um, the, the biggest thing that people think, <laughs> the biggest uh, cheat thing that people think about it is that we came here to be happy and then we run around hunting the happiness uh i think that we came here to grow and to get the experience and a lot of times occasionally we can be happy a lot of people uh, confuse happiness with the emotion of joy and these are different things Joy is one of the eight basic emotions that we experience and we switch them. And the function of the emotion of joy is repetition. So basically, whenever you're experiencing joy, you lock down for your, for your body and your unconscious mind to repeat the similar experiences. So if you, if you have uh, sadness and joy as, a function, as, a, as an emotions that if we read the functions of the emotions, then whenever you you're sad then you then you're joyful right then you lock it or if somebody you know sometimes <laughs> this is funny because sometimes you've got to watch people's bodies people's bodies reactions it's just it's just so funny so somebody would tell you as a coach watch it somebody would tell you yeah I was I, I felt really bad and I was just he left me and I was so broken yeah I was uh, so broken, yeah. and yeah. they smile. And the... <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody smiles, but uh, yeah. but but yeah. but, the, but, the, but they feel this uh, victim, who just like uh, and have they have they cheated. And victim, uh, victim yeah. is an amazing power position. I'm telling you, if you want to rule the world, you need to become the greatest victim, because whoever is broken has the power. Because somebody comes in and they say, oh, I feel so bad, you know, everybody, like me, like my parents died, right? And I can sit there and say, yeah, my parents died, you know, and just like, and other people feel uncomfortable. And then all of a sudden they feel they owe me something. Oh, poor Liana, I need to help her. People do that unconsciously. A child that is left at home and they say, they see that their parent uh, is busy. And the only time when their parent comes to them and, and cancels the job is when they're sick. Unconsciously, they learn. If I feel bad, 
then I get love. And unconsciously, people grew into that because they're, they're victimizing themselves, right? Or uh, we feel that we are, there are two types of victims. The victim that wants to save the world, and they, like you and I, we're cool okay. victims. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know so, that. <laughs> yeah. The, the, we want to save the world, right? To overcompensate for our suffering. Say, we're going to save the world and we prove that we deserve, that we're amazing. Um, I, I, I've done a lot of therapy, so I kind of left it behind. But I noticed in people that, that start the coaching, the therapy career, they want to save the world. The money we thought we are heroes. Huh? Well, I thought we are heroes. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Heroes, exactly. Superheroes. I still have my Wonder Woman cup. <laughs> we're superheroes we're changing the world so this is the cool victim okay and the bad victim the, to be the cool victim you have to ha have resourcefulness right you have to have energy you have to push yourself go out there put yourself out there take the punches right and overcome it so high energy victim is the cool victim and the low energy victim they just go into supremacy and being chosen because and if they can't get it get there to have good things then how do they feel special and you need to recognize these clients they say nobody can help me mm -hmm. yeah i have i have met, met lots of people in my, I, in my, own, my yeah, pro life. yeah my problem is so big it's so yeah. special yeah nobody can help me yeah. and then when these people come to me my job as a coach to break this pattern they say i can't help you why you're good. I say, well, nobody can help you. You told me that. So then when they come to you and they say, nobody can help you, they say, prove me wrong. But mm -hmm. they, they, they get their secondary benefit unconscious. I'm not blaming anyone because this is the unconscious thing that people don't see. And I have a lot of shit that I don't see about myself. And we all do. It's just we have different levels of consciousness and awareness. So I'm not judging them. I'm not laughing at them. I'm just showing that the fact of how it's happening. So people come to you and they say um, that that's how, that's where they get that I'm special thing. And you know what? I'd rather have a child that has pride and he's a cool victim or they try to get the special, like, you know, being, being unique and supreme and special from that programming rather than a dead child. So that's a compensatory uh, mechanisms for traumas. And at some moment, we accumulate enough resources and enough wisdom, and we start looking at these traumas bit by bit and eliminating. And that's how we grow, and that's how we accept ourselves, and we become whole. But until that, um, that's a path. And somebody's in front of us, and somebody will be behind us. But every soul will go through that. So it's not that you're special, that you went there faster. It's just you got there faster because you started earlier. That's it. And somebody goes faster. Somebody goes at their own pace. That's all fine. For you, it's all about you and how you experience the world. So for you, just find people who vibes the same way, who feels that you're helping them and you are helping and you feel that you're helping them. So you have an energy exchange and you're both happy about what you get. Because whatever you attract, whatever you feel about yourself, that will you attract. Your clients, a lot of times, will reflect something that you're going through or that you just went through. So the moment I close some deal with myself, right, about, like, something's been going on with me, like, like my, my husband acted child, like, as a child, right, and I couldn't accept my inner child, there is going to be like a bunch of clients that come in, the new people that have the same thing. And I'm like, okay, okay, I got the hint. So thank God. I'm like, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> so it's always going to be a mirror. The world is a mirror for you. I, I get this feeling lots of times. Like uh, I, I'm thinking certain things. I'm moving to certain incident. And suddenly uh, some people I meet and they say that same stuff and uh, from their childhood things and all. And uh, like, uh, like I was just thinking that previously. So, uh, so yeah. it's like it's like you meeting those people, how you perceive yourself, your world, and uh, like what you're thinking day by day. So you you're thinking, of course, attracts people. Is that correct? Yeah.
Yeah, that's correct. And I'm actually feeling very good energy right here, right now. Because I'm feeling whatever we created is very genuine and very through heart. And you are super awesome and cool. And thank you for being so great. I really appreciate you. And I feel very comfortable with you. And I feel that some, whoever will watch this video, they will have some aha moments. And maybe that's going to be a, yep. extremely uh, transformational for them. So I'm, I'm happy with yep. what we created today. It's a, it's a pleasure. It's a really pleasure to have you and share this awesome moment. Like uh, whatever the things that you have shared is like coming from a deep, uh, I mean, insight, experience, analysis. And um, it's a total different level. Like, like it's total different level <laughs> saying it My pleasure. So, and uh, and the thing is that uh, how does oh, like person feel like whoever have now learned coaching okay and uh, want to be a coach how does one know that he's ready to coach he's just uh, he's just uh, he can't start his business and uh, he's just in it how does one know that he's a coach i mean he's ready to help people. one of my mentors one of my mentors said if you look back at yeah. when you started and you're not ashamed of that, yeah, you started way too late. Okay. I don't know. I, 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 no, I like, you didn't? why should we be ashamed? It's all complex. Yeah. If you, if you look back on yeah. your, on when you started in the past and you don't feel ashamed of how you did it for the first time, you started, that means that, that if you're not ashamed for the first time, you started way too late. Meaning you must be ashamed and you must make mistakes and you will fuck up and people will be not happy with you. But okay. it's, all, it's all the experience. Your soul's already vibrated and your soul's already attracted and that, that experience already happened in the quantum field in the vibrational field and then it manifested into the physical world already you saw your your clients that come to you they need the experience that you will provide so they are attracted to you at this particular time at this particular moment in order to get the particular experience and that's how you attract each other because you're mirrors of each other even though you're a coach and they're your clients you're still teachers of each other, just on different level. So it's your ego that tells you, oh, I need to be perfect. I need to know everything. But remember, when you start controlling things, when you feel I'm not enough, that's the moment you personally start growing because that's your, your father's emotion and your father's emotion is your growth point. So that's, that's just the thing that you have in your genome to control things. And the moment you feel that, that, that question comes, how do I know exactly? That's the moment when you start growing. So you just say, thank you. I appreciate you. I'm growing right now. That's it. I'm done with this next step. Let's go. Wow. Good? Uh, I mean, uh, yes, I, 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 I'm getting this. Like uh, experience. Uh, we're growing and our clients are growing and we have to make mistakes but certain people needed that and uh, and what we got it and uh, and that's where coaching really starts it's not that like uh, we have to learn everything about coaching industry and then be a master and degree uh, or certified coach uh, something like that I, I used to thought that that we need to have a certificate we need to have four year or five year degree in that what is the new thing? I mean, just the experience and helping people or something in some ways. You know what and I love, to, what, to, what Tony says? Tony says, he actually, he's not qualified. Like he's, it's not that he's not qualified. That's, I, that's the wrong pick of word. He's not certified. He yeah. was kicked out from the uh, NLP school, neurolinguistic programming, because he started practicing way too early before he was certified. So he, he just self-taught practical psychologist. And when people used to come to him and said, show me your license, show me your certificate. I'm not saying that certificates are bad, but Tony used to say, I have a PhD in results. How about that? <laughs> and I love that because I know people that have a whole freaking wall of certificates. And I used to be one of them. I used to go and I get certificate certificates and I was obsessed about it. In my practice, uh, I think there are only two times that people ask for my certificates. 
and mostly people ask for certificates when there is a seminar like you know like they need to sell the tickets and and that's that's the thing unless you have like the book the airs and then you actually you you already have your reputation that that precedes you right so um i know people that have a lot of certificates they can't do shit and they're scared of entering the field i think the the way how you can help a person number one is the love to love the client when you you always need to remember to work from the field of heart because when a person doesn't trust you and they ask for credentials and they are so in control and they're super tight that only means one thing it's not that they're just uptight or whatever whatever and i learned that too it's just they don't have they don't receive enough love from you but when you open up your heart and when you love the person they feel absolutely in touch with you and we've done a lot of tests with that and it's just remarkable how it works so if you feel that you're not able to love the client don't take the client there's going to be another coach or another therapist that will help them that will love them and they will connect only work with people that you feel you can love is that 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 would that would be a good and actually you will once you decide that you will start attracting people like that they will just come to mind to your life wow it is it's the it's the it's the game changer like uh, you have to love the clients that's what yeah. and and they will receive the uh, the thing that you want to share people feel and, that people just feel it yeah and uh, i mean um, love is what change people like like if tony uh, what he does he does it by love i feel that uh, he's truly coming from the place of love and uh, if you just love someone that's it you already help them to heal that's it yeah. that's all. you just do do just that they they're already healing and then if you can say something smart oh my god that's going to be an amazing <laughs> result and then you have a couple of transformational techniques done you asking a couple of right questions when self reflect you already help them sometimes people just pay because they 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 come to psychoanalytics they just sit there and talk for an hour about their shit and psychoanalytics says them like five lines and they pay them like you know 300 bucks and go home great i mean uh, you need to just uh, people uh, have nobody to talk to yeah yeah that's what the, that's what that's the reason most people go to bar and uh, they spend the hours in there because the, the, they they need people to talk to and uh, and that's what what people are searching they're searching that uh, that uh, formula or something that will change their life or healer or a hypnotist what they need is to share the message in some ways and uh, and somebody to understand them right so um understand uh, and not to be judged that's very yeah. important too because they want to be safe place safe place to share who they are and and their fears and their shortcomings and yeah we have this yeah. Uh, we have this really uh really a a a what called the human error of judging things or maybe it's good or whatever reason why we have this we judge things and and uh, that's the reason why we label things like somebody's um, optimist somebody's pessimist good bad narcissist we label thing label people in certain ways judge but it's really important that uh, i mean what you said like uh, uh, we help people try understanding and not judging how do we stop that like how do we stop that how can we be non judgmental at that time you can't we can't <laughs> you stop you stop judging you stop living <laughs> that's it okay okay just, so we that's so, it You see you're trying to be perfect. Don't be perfect. Just accept your your fuck ups. That's it. <laughs> you just accept that you're never going to be perfect and that's it. And you live with this. You just need to show up. You can't okay. be perfect knight in shining armor. You just show up and you do your best. That's what how it works. Because duality is good, bad, light, dark, right, not r- right, wrong, kind, evil. All those dualities we live in the samsara wheel. all those dualities is the main entertainment on earth so i will get my experience that my soul wants and i will have certain dualities installed in me that i come as a package 
and I will see the world in this way. And this is my entry point of my attention in this world and how I experience the world. And another person is going to be Trump supporter and is going to be a Hillary supporter. They will never understand each other, but they can still be respectful to each other. And they can still, even if I disagree with you, I still respect you. There is a lot of stuff started happening with all this COVID and masks, right? People get aggressive. People get personal with each other. They disrespect. And actually, the funny thing is like the more educated people are, the more they feel entitled to attack people and to force their opinion on others, which is just funny. This is, this is a, a very immature position. This is a position of a hurt child that is sabotaging, that is aggressive, the child that was not heard. So um, in that case, I'm just saying I'm not your mom and not your dad. Just, you know, don't, don't, don't project stuff on me. You know, <laughs> I respect you. Thank you. But I have my right to my opinion. You have right to your opinion. That's it. And as a matter of fact, you know, the moment I accept that on me, the moment I accept that I'm not going to be perfect, these people kind of stop appearing in my universe. It's like the vibration when you when you accept that, when you accept the judgment and your shortcomings and that you're not perfect, these people just stop appearing in your life. The moment if I say that I'm wrong or right and I'm considered, I'm guilty, whatever, whatever, I just overwhelm myself with that. All that world comes out that these people come at me, right, through social media and life. I'm like, what's going on? And then I just catch myself because I vibrated something inside of me. And these people came at this vibration to show me their souls. This is how I see they attack me. But I see there is an amazing book called Radical Forgiveness. Um, I think you can find it online, even on YouTube, just mm -hmm. an audiobook. And I like this approach. And this is how I see the world works. This, on the social level, it can be uh, an attack. But on the soul level, the soul of that person comes to your soul and it shows what you don't accept about yourself, what you need to pay attention to. And the moment you understand that they actually give you a favor, you forgive them and you forgive yourself and you accept it. So you've moved and you move in the next level. And, and it's like you're in the next grade of the, of the development. Um, so that's, that's how I see it works. And, you know, it, it requires a lot of consciousness, but can we say hard, like, but then oh, we, can we say like, we are getting, feedback upon our beliefs and our own like that our own uh, like yeah, uh, words yeah, that exactly. what we say we had, every time we're just getting feedback uh, like uh, every, our exactly own, <laughs> that's, we're that's in what school it is, here right? my man we're yeah. in school here we're like you think <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you think people are like billionaires you know super rich super wealthy super powerful they have their own lessons so, yeah. you know, there is no, like, the idea of, oh, I'm going to be a Russian. Like, somebody, somebody wrote me recently on Instagram, uh, oh, you know, my idea of happiness, that if I'll be skinny and rich, then then I wouldn't have any problems. So, I'm like, <laughs> you know. Everybody like, has their own problems. Never have, yeah. Obviously, you know, they, they, they have their concept that if they reach there, then this is, it's like me, you know, when I was, when I was a teenager, I thought if I'm going to make a lot of money, I'm going to be happy. And then I got to that level and I was like, oh my God, somebody cheated me. Life cheated me. I'm not happy. I'm not, I'm not even myself. I'm like living in all these masks and I just don't let myself feel any emotions. I'm like totally non-authentic. And I think the real wealth is to, to be authentic. The real freedom is to do what you want with whom you want, when you want, as long as you want. That's the real freedom for me. And I'm a, I'm a wow. freedom hunter. In this reincarnation, I'm a freedom hunter. Yeah, I can, I can feel that. I can feel that, really. Uh, the things that you share on Instagram, the energy, I, I can feel that. Like, uh, there, there's, there's a freedom fighter inside it. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> there's next level or something. I can feel that thing inside of me as well. Like freedom is the must. Like it's it's my number one priority. Freedom. <laughs> like um, <My> like yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. That's a total different topic. Uh, but hey, one more thing is that is there a last message if you want to if you want to say to this whole world if there is a last message that you want what what is that message what is the message that you want to try to give by your work by the things that you do and to the all the people. 
the main message that I want. Yeah, main message. What is the main message? What is the main the message that you are trying to create of all these things that you're trying? Good question. Um, I think the realization that we are here to create and the more energy we waste on defense and reaction, the less energy we spend on creating and building something that we really want. So waste less energy on things to, to, to react to, things that actually don't matter. Realize what is really that matters to you, what really drives you, what really makes you excited and go and build that and cut off everything else. It's called a reductive technique. I learned that from somebody. Uh, people just reduct things that they don't need because there's so many things that our attention can be stolen by. So keep your attention where you want it to be rather than being reactive. And it takes some energy and it takes some consciousness, but it's worth it. Everything has a price. And understanding are you willing to pay the price are you willing to to do the repetitive exercises or repetitive uh, spend money on on education uh, and time and effort um realize what, you, what really drives you and what you really don't want in your life and then go after that and and uh, put resources and and just be okay with the price that you need to pay for that that's the message that i that i uh, give to the world, I think. I hope so. <laughs> this is what is what's important to me. Like uh, cutting off the 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 things that is uh, cutting away okay. things that you don't want, and just just focusing your energy resources on what you really want. What actually what what is true to you? What really drives you? Not the concepts. Not the like. Oh, and you need to big. You need a big house, right? But re what, what is really important for you? What is really important for you to create? For you, for me and for yourself, I know that it's important to build a community of like-minded people, spiritual people, people that support, share love. It's just interesting to talk to, right? Uh, and and that's, that's what's important for me. That's why I agree to do things like this, that, you know, you reached out to me. We don't know each other well. Uh, but after this, we do... Um, but, um, I feel like I need to share that with people, with the private communities, because people are hungry for this. People like myself, I'm hungry for conversations like this, for how the world works, how the, 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 the feelings work, how the energy works, how do I organize my time, space and capacities and resources? It's important and you can't find, there's so much noise out there. There's so much bullshit and such such, such an ego, uh, ego races. And I'm not saying that ego is bad. Ego is good and you need to sustain your physical body and you need to achieve and you need to impress people all over the world. But there is also a thing called resonance, right? There is also what is that my heart is dancing about and what makes me joyful. And I think I'm like starting salivating. It's just like so yummy for me to talk about this. <laughs> so... So this, this is what I wish to everyone to find for themselves. And whenever they do, they will start being less judgmental and more in, in harmony with themselves, more wholesome. It's all about reconnecting the part of yourselves and reconnecting to the divine, to the creator. And I'll shut up here. Yeah, that's a fantastic message. I mean, most people needed to utilize the resources that they have instead of finding and thinking that when I will have resources, then I will start instead of utilizing that. Like life is about being resourceful is what I feel. And uh, what the two things, anything that you have and just uh, put that, the, that drive and then creating something. Amazing message. I mean, uh, it all came from yeah. heart. And uh, you're also trying to create that from your heart. And all uh, this, uh, this, uh, this girl, uh, sharing this message to the world. And uh, yeah, it's people really need to utilize that. Uh, yeah, it's a great, fantastic to have you here. I, I mean, uh, we were yeah, waiting for it for a long time. I mean, previously yeah. it, it was announced, that, and uh, yet we need to cancel for 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 reason. Then uh, within this uh, today we did it. 
uh, people who uh, were, were really waiting for it. Yeah, waiting for it, and they're gonna really find value in this information. And yeah, this thing's gonna we gonna share it to the whole world, guys. Most people needed help, and the value, the content that you have shared. Uh, I mean, really, guys, <laughs> you this video like twice or thrice, okay? I, I like for little for me, I have to uh, watch this video two or three times to really understand it. Like uh, we were just, uh, we just, <laughs> we just talked here, and uh, so she just answered and uh, she shared her insight in about it. But it's way too deep. Like I, I need to go through it twice or thrice to understand what she really said. I it's know whole, it is deep. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. It's, it's the problem I have. You know, it's just like sometimes <laughs> I go really deep, and I'm like, whoa, you know, like uh, yeah. translated to to people who's like new to this, right? Yeah. Um, and and you guys, if you want to reach out, I'm uh, on Instagram official yes. dot uh, Liana dot start happy life, and I do some posts. And no, we 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 we'll share, we'll share the link. We're, I'm, I'm going to share the link. Let me let me know if I'm too complicated. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down. <laughs> um, and then John, I just want to thank you, and I want you like I want you to listen to me really carefully right now. This is something really important I want to tell you about you. I think uh -huh. that you have a lot of courage and you have something that not many people have. You have a lot of class and a lot of heart and that will take you far. You just need to continue doing what you're doing, finding a way, finding resources around you, how to monetize it, start taking from the world so that you can give more and just step by step, one step at a time. You're never going to be perfect. I'm going to tell you, you're gonna, even if you're perfect right now in the moment, you're still going to fuck up and that doesn't matter. Just continue moving because you are, my man, you're awesome. Thank you. For <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, like being here, spending your time, precious time in, uh, in the community and sharing this great knowledge. Like, uh, I mean, it's really, it's really helpful. It's really awesome. Thank you, Liana, for being here, spending thank time. Thank you so uh, much. Well, we and, 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 uh, and have an awesome day as well with your family and the things that you're doing. I hope your business will, will be super I mean, you're going to scale up. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I'm going to reach out to you again. Uh, like, are you, are you thinking to write your own book someday? Yes, it's been on the project, but uh, honestly, it wasn't a priority. I'm thinking more of uh, creating, creating online courses for people like some, something that's called marathons mm -hmm. when actually you have like programs ongoing programs um online and when you can actually enter and you'll be guided through things this is what i'm working on um i i love working in groups live groups but right now there's just with all the covid stuff it's just impossible i just love the energy i just love the 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 quantum field that creates the vortex and just the transformation like the, the, the private groups are incredible. Uh, but if I can't do that, at least I'm going to do some marathons and some courses for people. That's the number one priority. And I think, yeah, the book would be, would be a great, um, great way to let people know about me. Um, I just feel there is so much to be told. Yeah. So honestly, I'm like, I'm feeling, I, I loved your question about what you said at what do you want to share with people, with the world? And I think that's what I will take for, for as an inspiration for my book, because you see, you're a great coach. Um, Cause that's, that's important for me. And I want to share what's important for me with the world and whoever resonates with that, then, you know, they're welcome. And whoever not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and the people who are watching is really going to be, now they will be curious about your book. <laughs> Like if you if you re ever release it, we're gonna share it in our group and uh, and about your about Thank your you, uh, things that that the marathon the things that you wanna create as well yeah yes yeah, just can send me the link so that people can find it and we're gonna share drop the links in the comment box about the website and uh, also her Instagram page so you people Thank can you. find her okay so yeah Thank you, I, my so, man. I appreciate it you're welcome and uh, have a fantastic day speak to you again soon. You right. too. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Good luck, Gwerty. Good luck, Gwerty.